Will cash continue to be king in Germany? Will Americans stop engaging in small talk? And how exactly will the quintessential American college experience or German wellness activities be shaped by the coronavirus? I'm going to be talking about these topics and more in this video. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again and welcome back to my channel. I know you don't need me to tell you that coronavirus has dramatically altered our world as we know it. There are plenty of experts out there who have projected the impacts this pandemic will continue to have on the global economy, the climate, governments, and globalization. But what I want to do in this video is conjecture about what social norms, customs, and behaviors this pandemic has either challenged or affirmed in both US and German cultures, and pontificate a little about how this virus will drive change in our cultures even after we have a vaccine. When I think about some of the most primary differences in culture between Germany and the US, I often think about how a lot of facets of American culture point to individualism, and how a lot of facets of German culture point to collectivism, even though it's considered to be an individualistic society. And I think that this pandemic has truly highlighted this divide. While I believe that both Germans and Americans alike struggled with a lot of the different public health measures our governments put in place in order to help slow the spread of the coronavirus, I think that a lot of Americans were challenged for the very first time by having their behavior lawfully curtailed for the good of the greater community. In contrast, I think generally, Germans were able to take this challenge much more in stride because a lot of their culture already revolves around doing what's best for their society at large, like recycling and reducing individual waste, following the rules, valuing equality, paying into strong social welfare programs, and even its education system. But with that said, I think that there are a few foreign traits that are slowly becoming more common among Americans. For example, and I've talked about this in past videos, generally Americans don't like to correct one another. If you see someone doing something blatantly wrong, illegal, against the rules, dangerous, Chances are Americans are not going to address that person's behavior, they're just going to ignore them. But lately, I've noticed Americans correcting one another more than ever before. Whether it's telling someone to put on a mask when they're walking around outside, telling someone to move away from them in order to maintain compliance with social distancing measures, or telling a fellow customer that they aren't following the one-way arrows we now have in a lot of our grocery store aisles. I also think that more Americans are starting to think about community in a different way. We keep hearing this term essential workers, and especially in the beginning of the shutdown, when everything was far more uncertain than it is now, I think that a lot of Americans were beginning to recognize just how much we need each other and how valuable community is. That in a lot of ways, they are completely dependent on other people. And so the health and livelihood of these essential workers, and quite frankly, many others, directly impacts them. Another big difference between German and Americans are consumer habits. Germans tend to be more frugal and risk adverse compared to Americans who spend quite a bit more frivolously if their income allows it, and even if it doesn't. Americans tend to live in abundance and are more willing to flaunt designer goods and luxury items compared to Germans, again, even if they can't comfortably afford it. There's even an entire idiom dedicated to describing this sort of behavior, keeping up with the Joneses. But the coronavirus has brought about one of the sharpest declines in US consumer spending, partially due to the biggest spike in unemployment in US history and partially because of the shutdown of brick and mortar stores, but also because a lot of Americans who weren't necessarily financially impacted by the coronavirus in terms of losing their job are still cutting back spending in preparation for a recession. Retail shopping has plummeted, which begs the question of whether this pandemic will have long lasting impacts on American consumer habits as Americans come down off their regular dose of shopping-induced dopamine and begin to reassess their financial priorities and decisions. 
Perhaps in the future, we'll see Americans leaning toward a more conservative style of consumerism, like what you see in Germany. When it comes to consumerism, Americans are also used to getting what they want when they want it, as part of what's been described as a microwave society mentality. And so having stores closed or having their food rationed or seeing empty shelves at the grocery store was a big shock to a lot of Americans. But when it comes to spending and this virus, Americans do appear to have one advantage over Germany, which is when it comes to how those monetary transactions are made. Anyone who's watched my channel regularly has heard me talk about the cash culture of Germany and how cash is king in Germany. In fact, about 70% of all transactions in Germany are done via cash, compared to Americans who make only about 30% of their transactions with cash. But paper money and coins are filthy, playing host to a number of viruses and bacteria as it's passed from person to person in all types of environments. So I'm curious to see if in the future, Germans are more open to paying with electronic payments, whether it's with their phone or contactless credit cards or regular credit cards, in order to avoid touching cash altogether or avoid touching the payment terminal. Americans are already well postured to use these electronic payments as a matter of convenience before the pandemic. Like I said, only about 30% of all transactions taking place in the US are done via cash. So maybe this will cause Americans to take even greater steps toward becoming a more cashless society. But it isn't just electronic payments. A lot of the American lifestyle is built around convenience. And there's really nothing more convenient than a drive-through, or as Germans call them, drive-ins. Drive-throughs are incredibly common in the US. Nearly every one of our near 250,000 fast food restaurants are equipped with a drive through but you'll also find them at banks, certain liquor stores, laundromats, vehicle service shops, coffee shops, pharmacies, certain gas stations selling food, and even some grocery stores will have curbside pickup available for its customers to where they don't even have to go inside to get their own groceries. Given their structure, drive throughs are very compatible with the type of social distancing measures coronavirus has led to. So it seems that what's been criticized by many non-Americans as enabling laziness has actually proven very useful under these circumstances. In Germany, there are some drive-ins with fast food restaurants, of course, but it's really nothing compared to the US. Even at most gas stations in Germany, you have to go inside in order to pay for your gas, instead of being able to pay at the pump like you can in the US. In non-pandemic circumstances, this typically isn't an issue for most people, but we're now finding ourselves in a situation where going inside of businesses is dangerous. So I'm left to wonder if German companies are starting to look at ways that they can service their customers without them having to come inside if it isn't truly necessary. After the 2008 recession, we heard a lot of talk about how business strategies were focused on being recession proof. Well, now businesses might start to look at becoming pandemic proof, whether that means ramping up delivery services, offering individual consultations and private shopping, or having a window or some sort of table outside of your restaurant where people can order and pick up their food. But one thing a lot of German restaurants have over American restaurants is outdoor seating. This is one of the many things that I really loved about living in Germany and visiting Europe because it's just not that common in the US to be able to sit outside at a cafe or a restaurant. And if there is outdoor seating, it's oftentimes still under some sort of awning or roof. So you're not out in the open air like you find yourself at a restaurant in Germany or throughout Europe. And of course, I'm not comparing city to city, but more so smaller towns in the US compared to Germany's small towns. And as our restaurants start to slowly open up here, Restaurants that have outdoor seating have the advantage because it's considered to be safer. So it would certainly be nice to have more outdoor seating at small town cafe and restaurants like in Germany. Also with American restaurants and some other businesses, 
I'm a little worried that this pandemic might lead to even more waste. If businesses start looking to one-time use and disposable solutions for keeping their business or their restaurant sanitary. I'm not as worried about this happening in Germany because Germans are much more environmentally conscious and there are already a lot of policies and regulations in place that would discourage this type of solution. Another thing that I've been thinking a lot about is American small talk and how this pandemic might curtail the inclination Americans feel to engage in small talk with strangers. Small talk, first and foremost, requires you to be in close proximity of someone else. And so with people in grocery store lines being spread six feet apart from one another or elevator capacity being reduced to one or maybe two people and people on sidewalks being sure to stay apart from one another, the occurrence of small talk is bound to dwindle. Furthermore, a lot of Americans have a tendency to smile at one another while walking by on the sidewalk, but wearing a mask obscures your facial expression. And so maybe it will become more common to nod instead of smile or maybe acknowledging one another will cease altogether. And for Germans, I have to wonder if public smoking will dissipate at all. The amount of public smoking in Germany compared to the US is very distinct, and being enveloped in a cloud of someone's smoke is usually my very first signal that I am back in Germany after spending some time in the US. But with everyone wearing masks outside, I'm wondering if this will affect the preponderance of smoking in Germany. Next, I want to talk about homeschooling. Schools across both Germany and the US began to shut down in the March timeframe, which meant that parents found themselves suddenly thrusted into the role of teacher for their children for weeks on end. In Germany, homeschooling is illegal, and so the concept of a parent serving as teacher for their child is really quite foreign, and this circumstance sort of forced Germans to rethink homeschooling. Now, I'm not at all implying that suddenly Germans agree with homeschooling, but it certainly forced them to adapt to a departure from the legal norm, and explore the possibility of homeschool, which pre-pandemic I don't think was a thought on any German's mind. In the US, I know a lot of my friends and many other parents really struggled with having to suddenly homeschool their children, especially if their school wasn't prepared to shift to an online curriculum or platform. But at least there wasn't a cultural hurdle that had to be negotiated because not only is homeschooling legal in all 50 states, but some 2 million students or 3% of the student population in the US are regularly homeschooled under normal circumstances. And of course, after talking about schools being shut down, I need to talk about places of work being shut down. With some variances, non-essential businesses in both Germany and the US were shut down right alongside schools, which meant that a lot of Germans and Americans began to work from home, or as Germans say, do home office. And of course, this really helped working parents because they were able to stay home and care for their children in the absence of open daycares and schools, but it was a massive change for both Germans and Americans alike. Now, Germany is well known for its strong labor laws and its healthy work-life balance. German employees are given a good amount of vacation time, they're given parental leave and medical leave, and they're expected to work reasonable hours. In the US, the work environment can be quite different, depending on where you live and work and who your employer is. An American employee might get very few days of vacation time, no parental leave, and little medical leave, or they might not get any of that. American workers often feel obligated to go to work while sick because otherwise they might not get paid that day, or they'll have to use their very few and precious days of medical leave. I think that coronavirus is very much challenging this sort of standard that we've set for ourselves because now we know that the virus was further spread by people who were sick with COVID-19 still going to work. And I think that going forward, employers or perhaps even the government may look at increasing sick call mandates in order to discourage workers from going to work while they're sick. 
Furthermore, a part of US work culture is this underlying pressure to work insanely long hours in order to look like a good employee. I've worked in several offices where people will come in one hour or two hours early and then stay several hours into the night consistently for no reason that was really apparent to me. It's not like they had so much work to do that they couldn't possibly get it done within the normal working hours. But with everyone working from home, this idea of being seen as the first one into the office and the last one to leave has been completely eliminated. And perhaps when we all go back to work, this pressure to work these insanely long hours will be eradicated. And hopefully this will lead to more Americans having a healthier work-life balance. But going back to the subject of school, the primary difference between the US college experience and the German university experience is the cost, but also the heightened social atmosphere and numerous extracurricular activities that US colleges offer compared to German universities. Right now, US colleges are trying to figure out how they're going to manage reopening their campuses for the fall semester, if at all. And for those that do decide to open, it's going to be a very different experience compared to what it was before the pandemic, since a lot of the social activities that truly shape a US college student's experience will most likely be limited or restricted in some sort of fashion. Furthermore, if these college-sponsored activities are restricted, and especially if a college decides that it's going to keep its campus closed and continue to only offer classes online, it begs the question of whether students attending that college should have to pay the full price of tuition. And I'm wondering how this is going to add to the ongoing discussion about the really high cost of American college tuition. The wellness industry, as Germans call it, is very popular in Germany. It's common to go to different saunas and spas dedicated to the promotion of one's health and relaxation. And there are even entire towns dedicated to this aim. And while Germans do take a lot of precautions in keeping these saunas and spas hygienic, for example, you have to take a shower before entering, it's really challenging to keep these facilities fully sanitized during all of the operating hours because customers are constantly cycling in and out of pools, saunas, showers, and chairs. So I'm really interested to see exactly how Germany's wellness industry is going to adapt its different policies, procedures, and practices in order to accommodate its customers' concern for sanitation. Something else that really sets Germans apart from Americans is their exquisite public transportation infrastructure. Between Germany's train system, buses, city metros, and honestly their city planning, most people can comfortably live without owning a car. This is not the case in the US. With the exception of those who live in large cities, Americans are highly dependent on their cars. Now, some areas of the US are slowly making progress in improving their public transportation infrastructure, but in a coronavirus era, Americans will most likely cling to their cars more than ever before, since it gives them total autonomy over who they're trapped in a small space with. I don't know if Germans will grow to become more hesitant about riding their trains, and if that hesitance would even supersede other factors they consider when riding a train, for example, the climate, but it certainly isn't a great time to try to introduce Americans to the idea of using public transportation over their cars. Another aspect of American culture that I think we're well known for around the world is our strong support for our military. Whether it's through the billions of dollars Americans give the military every year through their tax dollars or through commercial businesses offering various military and veteran discounts, or just a general support the troops mentality. Americans often call their service members heroes and surveys consistently show that Americans offer more respect to their service members than nearly any other profession. But with this pandemic, suddenly the definition of hero has been redefined in the US. 
to include healthcare workers, teachers, and other essential workers like truckers and grocery store cashiers. And I'm wondering if in the future, in the US, there will be less pandering toward military service members and perhaps more appreciation shown toward these types of professions. Maybe we'll start to see healthcare worker discounts or first responder discounts just as frequently as we see military discounts. Another thing Americans are known to have are stricter alcohol laws, especially compared to Germany. In the US, the laws vary state to state, but in general, you're not allowed to drink in public and restaurants are not allowed to let you leave their premise with an alcoholic drink. However, in the wake of this pandemic, the restaurant industry has been devastated, and in an effort to help soften the blow, state lawmakers have loosened restrictions to allow the sale of alcohol to go. When restaurants all begin to open again, I wonder if states will reconsider allowing these looser alcohol laws under normal circumstances, since I think the argument can now be easily made. Another difference between German and US culture is the average size and type of our homes. In Germany, it's more common to live in an apartment or a smaller house than it is in the US, where most Americans live in houses and larger houses at that. In 2016, the average US home was 2,640 square feet, which is about 245 square meters. In 2018, the average German home was 92 square meters, or just under 1,000 square feet, which is less than half the size of the average US home. This meant that when Americans and Germans alike were told to stay at home, Americans had quite a bit more space compared to Germans to stay home in. Now, I live in DC, I live in about a 600 square foot apartment, which is about 55 square meters, and I've been perfectly happy holed up in my apartment without any issues, so I'm not saying that Germans have any sort of disadvantage by having a smaller average size home, I just think that it's interesting to think about. I also have the big assumption that probably more Americans own home gyms compared to Germans because they have so much more space on average, whether it's a larger garage or an entire spare room to be able to house that equipment. And so I have to wonder if when gyms were shutting down in both the US and Germany, if Americans still had access, more access to workout equipment compared to Germans. And speaking of homes, I've been thinking a lot about how in American homes, particularly older homes, you still see a lot of doorknobs compared to Germany, where I didn't see a single doorknob, everyone had door handles. And of course, to operate a doorknob, you have to fully grip the knob in order to turn it, whereas with a door handle, you can push it down with your elbow or the back of your hand or literally any part of your body or object. And I would think that this has to reduce the transmission of potentially dangerous microbes. All right, guys, the last thing I wanna talk about deals with grocery stores. And if you watch my channel regularly, then you probably have already picked up on the fact that I really like to talk about German and US grocery store differences. And one thing I've talked about before is that in German grocery stores, you have to either bring your own reusable bags or you have to pay for plastic bags there and they will be like the thicker plastic bags, not like the ones you commonly see in the US. Now in the US, there are certain cities or counties that have completely banned plastic bags or that require the customer to pay a fee per bag they use from the grocery store. And then of course there are plenty of Americans who bring their own reusable bags to the grocery stores with them. However, one of the public health measures taken by some cities, like San Francisco for example, was banning customers from being able to bring their own reusable grocery bags into the store with them. Because the idea is that if a person has the virus in their home, then it's probably also on their grocery bag. And they don't want people then bringing that virus ridden bag into the store, putting it on the grocery shopping cart, handing it to the cashier, placing it on the cashier's counter, and effectively spreading the virus everywhere that bag is touching. Now, I don't think that this was a precaution taken anywhere in Germany, and I would actually be really shocked if it was, but I thought that it was really interesting and worth bringing up in this video. All right, guys. Whew. 
that was a lot to say and a lot to think about. And I really hope that I got you guys thinking about how this pandemic might shape our cultures going forward. What actually got me thinking about this topic is a video that I did about the red solo cup. You know the cup. You've seen it in so many Hollywood movies featuring US party scenes. And this cup actually came into existence because of the 1918 flu pandemic. So who knows what's going to come out of this pandemic that we will look at 20, 30, 40 years from now and, and remember, wow, we have this item or this process or this business because of the 2020 pandemic. So I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are, what your ideas are, how you think it's shaping our culture. Make sure you put all of those in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Find me on Instagram if you're not following me yet. I post stories on there all the time for you guys to be able to keep up with me and point out different US and German cultural differences. Thank you so much to all of my patrons for the support you've given me and I will see you guys next time. Bye!